today is a very good day because right behind me is basically everything we need to plop into the Game Boy Mega Machine to give it stereo Leslie speakers. Well, Leslie speaker drums anyway. How cool is that? So a quick recap on what's been happening with Leslie speakers. Initially, Tony dropped off a handful of these Leslie speaker setups to the museum with his son about a month ago now. I turned one of them into a Leslie speaker guitar, which was reasonably awful. The one that was the odd one out, I offered to give it away and somebody called Paul has come to pick it up. Hopefully they are gonna wire it up and stuff. We'll find out very soon. But yeah, now it's finally time to get on with the initial plan with these and that is putting them into the Game Boy Mega Machine as stereo Leslie speakers. So this is what we've got right here. The first thing that I did was build these wooden boxes. Basically all these do are house the speakers that are inside and underneath. And the speakers are just some random 12 inch cones that I had sitting around. Both of them are odd. So, you know, what are you gonna do? You can see that it's got a pretty ropey spiral print on it to show extra that it's spinning. There will be illumination on top of these as well. Just so you can definitely see what the fudge is going on. Underneath we have an amplifier that is wired up to the speakers. So that's just basically one setup. So it's just an amplifier plugged in to two 12 inch speakers. That's all it is. And then and above it is all the wiring that is required to basically talk rather ropely to both of the Leslie speaker motor setup. These bits right here are the control panels for the separate Leslie speakers. Ah, I've dropped them all. I really wanted to maintain the original function, which is when you can switch between the two speeds uh, via the solenoids uh, that actually switch between the two mechanisms. You can see that in the first video I did on the Leslie speakers, if you aren't up to date with this stuff. And I've also added a speed control on the fast setting. So when it flicks over to the fast motor, which is this one, well, it actually ends up going through this. And this is what we call a variable frequency drive. Funnily enough, I got both of these from a pet shop down the road because I was being a cheapskate and wanted them quick and I went the cheapest and easiest route and they're, they're all right, they do the job. These were in the pet store because they match up quite well to uh, fish pond pumps and stuff like that, but they can also be used for like CNC machines, making free phase power and stuff like that. But right now we're literally just using these as uh, speed controls for the AC motors. So we're able to control the speed and change the frequency at which the motors run at. But this also means we can add control voltage to it. So we have a control voltage input over the speed of the Leslie speakers. Oh yeah. The speed control is a little bit wavy and slow and stuff, but it doesn't matter. The thing is, is uh, the, uh, the effect in my opinion is really good when it's just completely out of phase. It's just completely all over the place. And I think it really adds to it. There is a project after this that I'm gonna be building a direct drive Leslie speaker uh, using uh, the last final baffle and that will be a bit more instantaneous and it can move around, hopefully it'll be able to move around like this. We're like, uh, uh, do, 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 do. But right now we're going sticking with the original ones because they look absolutely awesome and there is a function here that is really interesting and good for the museums because you will be able to see these from the front of the Game Boy Mega Machine. The Leslie speakers won't be in sync uh, unless you flick it over to the slow mode because then it'll be in sync via the mains AC so that is keeping it in sync but I don't think that is a problem. I don't understand why you would want these to be in sync. Having listened to them in sync is a bit boring. If they're out of slightly out of phase with each other, it sounds cool, but it doesn't sound as cool as when they're completely running at different speeds, completely just going off crazy. That is the effect that we're after. And there was also another suggestion in the comment to uh, add an ability to sync these up to the tempo. But like the first thing you do if you have a plug-in on a computer is you turn off the sync option because you know it just sounds stale when it's all in sync. And that's the magic about working out of a box is something slightly wave and you get them reasonably slow in sync but they slowly phase over time and stuff that is the magic so we are not going to worry about syncing these up because meh 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 if you really want to sync these up well use a damn plug-in on a computer don't come here the vfds are bolted right onto this project enclosure which funnily enough i got from the pet shop as well because you know it's a nice enclosure also john who makes the really cool cable ties sent in this rather bonkers uh, extension cable and i kind of got the idea of these uh, lovely little uh, grommet thingamajiggies off him. Right, let's double check the work first.
hopefully you got a feeling of the stereo field there. I was only using the camera microphones there. There is stereo, but there's only a little bit, and I'll be using uh, proper mics a little bit further apart in a little bit when we get this in the Game Boy Mega Machine. So let's go and get in the Game Boy Mega Machine. Ho ho ho, so now they are in. One is over there, one is here, and uh, yeah, the control is in the middle. I haven't quite put the amplifier in, but we're getting progress. But this is not all, you'll notice it's very dark, so I added a light to the sides, and now they look they look pretty nice. The light isn't too overpowering. It's a, a very subtle thing, but it makes it really shows the spinning off pretty well. Even when it's spinning quick, it looks pretty good. The bit that is left to go in here is a keyboard that will just be on the top. And then there'll be a clear perspex front in front of these. And then this is the problem is, well, this is bare on the front. I need to find a good enough sort of speaker, metal speaker grill that is transparent, see-through enough. You know, you can see through the uh, threads of the speaker grill, but it's also stopping people putting their hands in and getting electrocuted, which is never good. Before I can have this running, in the museum, I've got to sort that out. Alas, I have not sorted that out yet. Anyway, let's uh, let's give it a test and see what it sounds like. So I've just got it wired in for the first time, and I've got to say I'm absolutely over the moon with how it is sounding. So now I'm going to connect up some microphones pointing to both of these. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll give you an idea and then, yeah, just see what it sounds like. There's obviously a lot of experimentation I'm going to need to do, but we are on the right tracks for bringing back the uh, Game Boy Mega Machine. How cool is that? For some reason, I seem to have misplaced my microphone stands, but not to worry. We've got insulation tape and keyboard stands. So there's one microphone and there is another microphone in there. It's going to be enough to show a bit of stereo separation and see what's going on. Thank you. 
So that's it for the Game Boy Mega Machine and the Stereo Leslie speakers. Uh, you may notice that I didn't use the control voltage in the performance kind of aspect and testing. That's because it needs a little bit more fine tuning and we'll be looking at that in the next update when I get some mesh over these, when I cover this over, when I have a keyboard hopefully here. And then after that, I'll be finally fixing the top thing and it'll be nearly, nearly, nearly done this thing anyway. Unfortunately, in the museum this weekend, these aren't going to be running because they haven't got fronts. You know, anything can happen. That is just not something that you want to be doing. Uh, tickets have already sold out for this weekend's open day. Uh, tickets will be on sale for following open days and stuff over on museumofeverythingelse.com. So if you want to see this and try loads of other different things, then go and check out. The information is over there and the links are in the description below. If you want to support the creation of these things and see loads of extra content and stuff and also get your name on a knob, which I'm going to be updating in a live stream in the next week, well, go and check out on um, Patreon or YouTube membership and stuff like that because, yeah, the help goes a long way to uh, doing these. I did actually accidentally break one of the variable frequency drives, so that wasn't that wasn't a cheap uh, mistake, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think about these in the comments and how much of a plonker I am. Please just, you know, let it all out. And until next time, I've been Look Mum No Computer. This is the Game Boy Mega Machine, and yeah, don't be scared to try it.